that obviously there are many other teach teachings by the Buddha on not eating animals that have been slaughtered, yeah. not just the threefold purity rule, that we need to take as a combination, not just threefold purity, but that to sort of see what the Buddha's intent was, right? And, and I think that the Vinaya rule was very much done when people were begging for arms and they weren't going into shops and they weren't going into slaughterhouses and going into restaurants and buying meat that had already been slaughtered. And I think, you know, to sort of, it kind of subverts the Buddha's intent to sort of say that would somehow fit the threefold purity rule because the Buddha wasn't actually talking about those situations, right? He was talking about when monastics were begging for arms and begging for food. And so this is what the 17th Kamapa was saying recently, was that, you know, um, actually, you know, if we look at it in the whole context of the Buddhist teachings, you know, that's why he banned any sort of meat eating on the premises of Kagyu monasteries is because he felt that it was completely inconsistent with the threefold purity for monastic. And he even said, you know, if you're a monastic and you go out and eat meat in restaurants, you know, you can't really call yourself a karma kagyu person because um, you're going against all the teachings of the Karmapas and the Buddha on this. And uh, many people were quite shocked by that um, because a lot of the followers were doing exactly that, right, including monastics. So um, I think in a way, you know, he took quite a strong stand on it. And in a way, it challenged a lot of people to think about that threefold purity rule more because I think, as I said, a lot of people also question the Giluk stance on it and the Kedrup J stance on it, because in other sutras like the Lankavatara Sutra and Mahapranivasa Sutra, you know, but it's clearly saying that uh, actually in most circumstances, you should not eat slaughtered animals at all. Right. So, um, yeah, it just seems like it's a little bit kind of, uh, you know, sub it's kind of sort of being clever. Right. You're kind of cleverly saying, well, you know, I went to this restaurant. It was already not kill it was already killed so it doesn't count so I can have it and it's like well yeah but then you're kind of discounting all the other sort of teachings given by the Buddha on this right I guess the 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 thing I would want the point I would want to make on this is that these it would it feels like in some ways it feels like sort of two streams of interpretation of mm -hmm. threefold purity right one that says you know, oh, you know, if you go to a butcher shop or you go to a restaurant, you know, the animal was not killed specifically for you, uh, therefore it's okay. Um, and then the other one, and you know, you mentioned the Karma, the seventeenth Karmapa here. He's not uh, by any measure the first to make that claim, right? Mm -hmm. There were, you know, have been a lot of Tibetan teachers over the years who were overtly critical of uh, the sort of. That, that interpretation of threefold purity. I, mean, I think specifically of uh, like Shabkar has this yes. uh, passage where he says, you know, look, some people say like, uh, you know, that if you buy meat from a butcher shop, it has threefold purity, but he's like, but look at this. The end result of that is we have butcher shops outside. And this is, so Shabkar is writing in the 18th century, right? He's like, mm -hmm. or 19th, early 19th century we have butcher shops outside our monasteries, right? The only reason they're there is because the monks are going to go and buy the meat, right? So that doesn't count, right? And so this, this argument, it has been there for a long time, right? It's not, yes. it's not a new sort of debate within, uh, within the Tibetan context. And the other thing that you bring up here, the Lankavatara Sutra and the Mahaparinirvana Sutra are also important parts of this. And Tibetans were well aware that these texts make explicit claims that the rule of threefold purity doesn't apply to um, Mahayana or sort of like later on forms of Buddhism. Um, Sakya Pandita makes this uh, in his uh, text on um, the three vows, the Domsum. He makes this uh, claim that he says, you know, for shravakas, for those who follow only the uh, the vehicle of the listeners, right, um, the not the non Mahayana Buddhists, he says, for them, uh, threefold purity, you know, eating meat that has threefold purity is fine, but in the Mahayana, all meat is forbidden, and he's so he's very much invoking this sort of idea in the Lankavatara Sutra and the Mahaparinirvana Sutra that threefold purity as a rule was a skillful means, right? These, mm -hmm. these sutras claim that, you know, you know, one of them, I forget which one off the top of my head, but, you know, the Buddha's asked, like, why did you allow it threefold purity in the first place? And he says, well, yes. 
was to make it easy for people to become Buddhist. And then once they became Buddhist, then we would say, okay, now no meat at all, right? And so these texts were were well known, right? Yes. And were debated. And 